Morning everybody, it's Dave and it's Bo and we're out here in the garden and Bo is not paying attention to me and she's gonna go and off in her own little world. So let me show you this week uh, what has happened. Uh, we've got the apricot tree beginning to turn color and lose its leaves. But look at how well this garden bed is starting to look. We got a lot of plantings done. We got a lot of mulching done. And it's just beautiful. We've got the Iris Nata pruned down. And I always laugh when at how fast this Iris grows. As soon as you cut it back, those new fronds come right out of the center. It's almost kind of like it's flipping you off in a way. I planted some Isotoma ground cover around the base of this newly planted Japanese maple. Again, this variety is Red Dragon. I also got some variegated dichondra. I guess it's not variegated, it's just silver rather than its normal color. I also planted a dwarf mugo pine here. This is called Slow Mound is the variety. It's from Isley Nurseries. All the roses in this bed have also been cut back and several of them have been moved and there's a couple still as Bo decides to join us today. A couple of these roses have been in the ground for a very long time and they need to be lifted because they've kind of sunk into the ground and their bud union uh, is below the soil level and that's not good. So plants are generally grafted, meaning that the rootstock is different than the plant up above. You'll see it here on this Japanese iris, that little knot right there at the base. But on roses, they're a little bit more common to see as that knot down at the very base of those canes. So that needs to be above the ground. And when it sinks below the ground, that is not a good thing. So. I'm going to spend some time raising a few of these. Uh, I just think this Ingrid Bergman here at the base and then Alina down here, you can kind of see it's totally buried. So I'm going to lift that, that up, clean it off a little bit and replant these. And this is definitely the time to do that. I got a few more Liriope. Uh, this is also Liriope Monroe's white. I also got a few more ground covers to continue on the ground covers that I've already planted. The one at the right, as you can see, is Elf and Thyme. And the one at the left, I accidentally said last week that it was Pratia. It is not. It is Lindaria, which is a different plant altogether. So that is the ground cover I'm using. Uh, it is kind of like an isotoma type of ground cover that's low growing, slow, uh, slow, low mounds, and a beautiful uh, flower to it as well. So we can kind of zoom in there on the blooms. Uh, other things this week, let me see. Not a whole lot is going on. Still need to get in and do a lot of weeding. This has been finals week at school, so I'm literally going in and doing grading and writing exams and things like that. Look at that beautiful almond bush. Perfect moment. That's just, that is a Shamus cypress back there. I forget the variety name on that, but another beautiful Chicago piece flower. And I'll be working on this bed next, as soon as I finish the one I just showed you. I just have to lift those roses, do a little bit more weeding and mulch, and I'm pretty well done. So hopefully in the next couple of days, that will be finished. I did get course I got a new plant. Uh, this I thought would be a really great tall columnar plant. 
That is the botanical and variety, and you can see it just gets a couple of feet tall, has some white blooms that kind of look like, almost like miniature yarrow blooms up at the very top of the plant, the top of the stems. So I'm excited for that to bloom. We even have a Centranthus bloom down here, totally off season. Look at that Hemananthus leaves. Look at those, they're so gigantic. Almost scary. Uh, let's see, let's go around to the other side of the yard. We have a Christmas tree, just in time for Christmas. Thank you again to my friend Tom, who sold that to me earlier today. Japanese maple, almost with all its leaves gone. Looking forward to pruning that, although it doesn't need a whole lot of pruning. Um, I'll go in and thin that out and lace it out a little bit. The Chiananthus, also almost all empty as far as leaves go, but the beautiful Pittosporums back here and the Jotropha, actually spicy Jotropha uh, in the center. And then that is the false Aurelia. Pomegranate, again, this is, uh, today is December the 9th. So we've had a very warm winter so far, definitely a very warm fall. We've got some Alstromeria coming up right there. Looking forward to, <laughs> definitely looking forward to rain, but I could deal with some clouds. That would be nice too. A little bit over a week ago, I pruned this Japanese maple back. And look at how beautiful and lush that fern is. Daylily bloom. I've been very pleased with that geranium so far. And we can see some leaves coming up from the lacogems. So I'm gonna go through and I need to clean out all these weeds that came up right when I redug that soil. Look at that Chamaecyparis primo. Beautiful begonia there in the background. This is the common Hemananthus, which I am gonna put in the ground. I think there's also a cat coming up. Here we go, cat even loves it. This is a variety of cypress called Wilma, I believe, actually. If we just turn the plant slightly, there we go. Yeah, Wilma, Monterey Cypress. Add some color to a darker corner. I'm gonna put that around where the Cheonanthus tree is. Um, other things back here need to get into the ground as well, especially the gardenias and the elephant ear that is gonna go around the tree as well with that beautiful dragon's blood sedum. And I also need to get that begonia in the ground too, because you know what, as soon as I get those in the ground, there's a lot more things I can buy. Lavender. We've also got some blooms coming up. In fact, let me come around so the sun's not in your eyes. Of the pink breath of heaven. And then also we'll take a look at the magnolia tree. Not the most attractive time for it, but this is the time where it's losing its leaves and I get to prune it. And then that's my favorite time of the year for this tree. So I think with that, I'm gonna give you a tip of the week. So for my tip of the week this week, 
is going to be how to prune rose bushes, how far back to prune them, and exactly where you should prune them. Now, every year when I worked in the nursery industry, I had people telling me that they pruned their roses wrong and they died. Believe me, they died for some other reason. There is nothing at all in terms of pruning roses that would make them die just from the pruning. So no matter what happens, no matter how bad of a pruning job you do on the roses, they're gonna come back just fine. So the main thing to keep in mind is if the rose bush is younger, like let's say five years and younger, it can be cut back really hard every year really low to the ground. The older the rose bush is, the less it can come back as easily. So it's kind of like us, as we get older, we get a little bit more tired, the same with rose bushes. So what I'm gonna do on this rose, and this is rose is about 10 years old, is I'm gonna kind of zoom in to one particular area, and I'm gonna look for an outwardly facing node. And so in this case, we've got this leaf right here, and right above it is a node. That's where the new branch is gonna come from. And when you take that leaf off, and you don't have to take it off uh, when you prune, but you will see a leaf scar, and right above that is kind of a little bump there. And that is where the new branch is gonna come from. If you pruned, like let's say to this one here, the branch is going to grow inward to the tree. You don't want that, and not a tree, but a bush. You want it to grow to the outside. So once we've got our idea of where we're going to prune, and it, believe me, you don't have to take the leaf off first. I just wanted to show you that as an example, is you're going to make that cut, and then that branch is going to grow out the following year. And then I will also highlight uh, with a name some of the plants I talked about in this video. Before I show you some of the highlights from this week's walkthrough of the garden, uh, I wanted to recap what we did last year as our channel. Uh, so in the 52 videos that I did, I had 1,250 thumbs up, 455 comments, and just under 32,000 views. So uh, thank you again to everyone watching the channel and uh, helping me out with that. So this week I highlighted uh, the dichondra, uh, silver pony's foot. Uh, when you look at botanical names, that is always the best way of finding a particular plant. The first botanical name, that is the genus, and it's always with a capital letter. Then the second is the species, and that's always with a lowercase letter in front. And then if there's a variety, that'll be in single quotes off to the right of that. The problem we have with common names underneath the botanical there is that it can vary. It can vary from grower to grower. If a person doesn't want to pay, for instance, like a royalty on a particular plant, or it might be something that is conducive to different parts of the country. For instance, last year in the videos, I talked a lot about mock orange. Well, on the West Coast, mock orange is pittosporum, but on the East Coast, it is a totally different plant. So you want to be very specific as to what you're getting by botanical name. I did not highlight this in the video, but I couldn't resist taking a photo of this. This is sedum Little Missy, and it's planted at the base of the bay tree. And I did that because the roots are really shallow. There, I can't really plant anything too close to that trunk, as you can kind of see in the background. And I thought this would be really good for spreading on top of the mulch. Pinus mugo slow mound is a terrific plant. It's just gonna stay in that small little kind of clump cluster and that is from Isley Nursery. This one I had highlighted several times throughout the past year 
it is one of my favorite Chamisiparus, and I have no idea how to pronounce that name, but that is uh, just such a beautiful plant, almost like a miniature Christmas tree. One of the new plantings, and this is just to the left of the apricot tree, is Chamisiparus golden pincushion. And you can see there how the variety name just has single quotes around it. Liriope Monroe's white, which I'm looking forward to that blooming in spring and summer. This is that low ground cover, Lindaria. And one of my favorite plants altogether, Isotoma, also known as Blue Star Creeper. And I'm looking forward to that growing and mounding and blooming. It's going to be a fantastic ground cover. I will see you next week with a new video.